Hey investors, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about Affirm. So Affirm is an interesting investment. It keeps on taking everyone by surprise. And, you know, yesterday it kind of leaked out some of their numbers and, the, you know, the stock was kind of really going up, up into the earnings and then it kind of sold off. And just going to go through all that and just try to unpick uh, Affirm's investment basis investment thesis because there's a lot here that's kind of worthwhile considering and um, now before we go ahead remember that a firm's fiscal year and color in the year are misaligned so i'm just going to talk about its fiscal year okay so a stock has um, a firm has seen a stock slide substantially over the last uh, three months okay the stock is down approximately 50 percent and a lot of people kind of reached out to me and said, oh, you know, uh, I read your article and, uh, you know, I, I see that you're bullish on a firm. And I said, OK, a lot of people just read the title of my article and they didn't read you know, the article itself. I said in the article here, look, uh, I, this is an excerpt. A firm at 74 times for net revenues is undoubtedly very expensive. Investors are pricing in a heavy dose of positive news yet to be announced to justify this valuation. However... As I go through the positives and negatives of this investment, I remain bullish as opportunity. To say that the firm is a clear-cut investment, fees, investment uh, clear-cut winning investment is a falsehood. There's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot on the line, and this is still a young company as it continues to make um, and it continues to grow its operations. At 76 times forward sales, it's difficult to see how much more this multiple can expand. However, assuming that Amazon's deal brings in even more revenues and consumers on board, this implies that the, that the firm still has a significant upside potential. So it continues to be the same thing here. The stock is super expensive and it is a young company. And to say that the firm is a clear cut winning investment is a falsehood. So there's a lot of nuance and it requires, you know, to kind of sit down and think this through. Now, here's the thing. They put out their results, you know, guidance increased, everyone's like super happy. But at the same time, it's pointing towards a meaningful deceleration from uh, Q2 2022. So they just reported Q2 2022 uh, up 77% year over year. Whoa, smash it. Well done, guys. And then the guidance is kind of not so strong. But remember that that a firm has this habit. They, they really are very much lowball in their guidance. And then they come in and they smash it through. And you can see here how they've done in the previous several quarters. Um, this is just their playbook, right? Don't pay too much attention to its guidance. Um, okay, so a firm at its core is about making it easier for consumers, or customers, to pay for merchandise, okay? And you can see they're doing really well. Active customers are up and to the right, up 150% year over year, and the number of uh, transactions per active customer continues to grow. So. All in all, they're clearly doing something right. More importantly, the number of active merchants is up 2,000% ti- year over year. So that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see this positive network effect. And, you know, it speaks for itself. They, they, they're doing something and they're doing something very, very well. Okay. So the goal is to be a credit card disruptor. And on this front, they are succeeding. Of that, we should have absolutely no doubts. Okay. Now, this is the problem, right? As we look through, we can see that it's non-GAAP operating margins ended Q2 at negative 2% compared to the same period that you go where it was positive 2%, okay? This is not a deal breaker, but it does make you think. The more that they're growing, they're struggling to turn that that revenue growth, uh, that, sorry, um, yeah, the revenues into stronger operating margins and this has been you know the thing that investors are just you know tough for investors because everyone wants to buy into the narrative you know such a beautiful narrative that a firm has but when we kind of unpick its top line it's like well oof, is it really worthwhile getting involved here um so this is what i wanted to highlight okay so as we look out for the year as a whole they're pointed to be negative 12 percent on the adjusted operating margin line okay negative 12 percent compared with how they finished in the previous year the non-gap operating margins was positive two percent so the more they grow they're not really translating that into a uh, strong uh, operating margins 
and you know that the non-GAAP uh, operating margins are, is a number that's ex excessively massaged uh, and adjusted. And for it to, even on the adjusted number, to be just, you know, leaving so much at double digits uh, negative rates, I mean, the negative operating margins is really, really tough investment thesis to build upon. Now, uh, in my previous article, I had talked about the Amazon deal, I'm not going to go into that here today, but what I'm going to highlight is that as it goes to, so in Q1 2022, they had 272 million shares outstanding. That went for this quarter up to 282, next quarter 290, and I estimate that they're going to leave Q4 with approximately 300 to 305 million. Okay, it's not a thesis break, you know, you know, you know Silicon Valley companies that do like to kind of pay their management well, and they should do, um, but, you know, it does, you know, as a shareholder, kind of caps you out of your upside potential. So the valuation is really tough to make a call here because if we say, okay, let's think this through, right? If we say that a firm, you know, is a, is a, is a monster, it's going to grow next year. So not this year that finishes in, in, in June, but next year by 35% year over year. So that puts its revenues at printing free uh, 800 million, okay? Now, at 16 billion market cap, investors are paying approximately 20 times forward sales. So it's not this year's, it's going into next year's forward sales, okay? And stocks don't trade in a vacuum. So you got like loads of different opportunities in FinTech right now that are really cheap. And why would you pay 20 times future revenues for a firm? It's kind of a tough call to make here. Now. And I know a firm quite well, and I know the investor base quite well. And you know, it's 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 a firm has a lot of success in the making, right? So it's class A management team with a ton of experience. Everyone says, "Oh, this is the PayPal mafia." Everyone like gets really bullish behind this company. Uh, they have a, a strong, innovative product, right? And they have the best of the best merchants on the network. Okay, you got um, uh, Walmart, you got uh, Amazon, you got Shopify. You know, so. Let's not talk about Peloton, okay? Let's keep, like, you know, let's move on beyond that one. Uh, now, so they clearly, you see, I talked about it earlier, the merchant network is clearly growing at a really, really rapid rate, okay? But the path to profitability is kind of like, wow, it's tough. So paying 20 times next year's revenues, really, you need a lot of conviction. And I know that everyone's kind of like saying to themselves, oh, you know, uh, a firm is going to just kill it in the next 10 years. But it's difficult to forecast the next 10 years. Nobody could have seen how COVID disrupted our lives and the implications that had. So it's very, very difficult to kind of try and understand and predict and forecast what the next 10 years are going to be like. And there's a David Eichhorn quote that I really, really like. Um, twice a silly valuation is just twice a silly. Down 50% doesn't make it a deep value stock. Uh, so... With so many really compelling investments right now, I'm struggling to find myself compelled to invest here. Uh, but if you want to find out the names that I am investing, don't forget to check out above the screen there, Deep Value Returns. Come over to Deep Value Returns. Check out what other people said. Check out the reviews from Marketplace. I help you by highlighting for you high-quality investment insights. Thank you so much for listening. See you soon. Bye-bye.